If you're using Zotero to organize your sources, and you want to do your academic writing either in Markdown or using LaTeX, you need a way to create and maintain a bib file of your Zotero library. Fortunately, there's an easy way to do that using a plugin called Better Bib LaTeX. Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with Better Bib LaTeX. First, I'll show you how to install the program, and then we'll go through the configuration. And then after that, I'll show you how to use the program to create a bib file of your entire Zotero library. And then finally, we'll look at how you can maintain that bib file through syncing. So if you're ready to go, let's get started. So you can see I have my browser open to Google. And the first thing we need to do is go to the download page for Better Bib LaTeX. So what I'll do is I'll just Google Better Bib LaTeX. You can see it pops right up. I'll click there and it will take me to the Better Bib LaTeX GitHub page, and I'll scroll down to the instructions. From there, I'll click on Installation, and then I'll click on Latest XPI File. Now keep in mind that the instructions I'm giving you here are for those of you who are using Zotero as a plugin to the Firefox web browser. From there, I click on the XPI file, you can see it's downloaded the file, and now it's asking me if I want to install it. I'll say yes, install, and then restart now. Now that Mozilla, or Firefox, has restarted, I'll click on the Z for Zotero to open up Zotero. It'll open up on the bottom half of the screen, and then I'll toggle it to full screen view. From there, let me just select one source, and I'll go to the info pane, and you'll notice that there's a new field in info. Below item type, it says citation key, and it's created a unique citation key using the last name of the author, the first name of the title, and then the year. And that will be the unique citation key that you'll use to identify this source when you're writing either in LaTeX or in Markdown. Let's look at the preferences. I'll click here on the actions gear, and then Scroll down to Preferences. And you can see that a new tab has been added up at the top that says Better BibTech. So that's where you configure Better BibTech here in Zotero. Now I won't go through every setting here. I'll just give you the basics. And then if you want to go explore things later on your own, you should definitely go for it. So first, under Citation Keys, I suggest that you check for Citation Key to ASCII. For quick copy format, you should have Pandoc selected if you're going to be writing in Markdown. Otherwise, if you're writing in LaTeX, you can use LaTeX, but I want it in Pandoc. Surround Pandoc citations with brackets. Let's say for now we keep it checked. Now when it comes to updating citation keys, this is something that you're going to have to work out by yourself depending on your writing style. What it boils down to is whether and in what circumstances you want Better Bib Tech to generate a citation key or update a citation key if you update the metadata for a source. So if you change the name of the author, will the citation key update automatically? For me, I have it set up where auto pin citation keys are manual, so things are not fixed, they can change. And then when there's a conflict, you can see that I have post fixed selected. And that just makes sure that if I import a source that I already have, Better Bib Tech changes that citation key so that there's no conflict later on. That is, you don't have two sources with the same site key. But again, this is something you'll have to play with. If I go to Export, I'll add Export Bib LaTeX as ASCII. And then down below, where it says when a reference has both a DOI and a URL, I'm telling it to only export the DOI. Again, this is your preference. When it comes to journal abbreviations, different journals or different formats have agreed to abbreviations for the names of other journals. This happens a lot in the sciences, not so much in the humanities and social sciences. Again, if you want to follow an abbreviation style, you can do it here. Otherwise, we can just go right to automatic export. And this is where we'll do the syncing later on. Advanced, let's not even worry about it. So let's close this tab. 
So now that we're done with the configuration, let's create a bib file from our library. Now with Better Bib Tech, you can export anything in your Zotero library into a bib file. It could be one item, it could be one collection, or it could be the whole thing. My suggestion is to do the whole thing because it's just better to have everything in one file and keep it simple. So let's do that. I'll go to my library, I'll right click and click select uh, export library. From there, I'll make sure better bib LaTeX is selected and then I will select keep updated. From there, I'll click on OK, and it will ask me where I want to save the file. And I will save it to the desktop, and my suggestion is that you use a simple one-word name for this file. It'll make things easier later on. I'm actually going to call it Test Library, all one word. Then I'll click Save. Now if you have a big library and you're doing this for the first time, it might take 10, 30 seconds, maybe even more. Just be patient, everything will be okay. From there, if I pan over here to the desktop, you can see that the bib file is right here. Let's open it up to make sure it has everything. You can see here the first four items, an online source, a book, a video, and an article in what is a very, very long bib file. And we don't need to worry about everything that is in it. We just need to know that everything is there. So let's close that. One quick note. If you look here on the left in my library, you can see that I have a collection called dot dot inbox. Now in an earlier Zotero video, I had that collection named at symbol inbox. And I put that at symbol there so that it would be, you know, when it's in alphabetical order, right at the top. What I discovered though, is that having that at symbol in the collection name messed with the bib file. So if you've done that, I suggest that you change the name of the collection from at inbox to dot inbox, or just something that doesn't have an at symbol in it. Now that I've created my bib file, let's talk about syncing. So I'll go back to preferences, make sure you're on the Better Bib Tech tab, and then click on Automatic Export. And this first item here, that's the bib file we just exported. And you can see that under status, it says done because there have been no changes to my Zotero library since the last export. However, if I were to close this for a second, and then I were to make a change in one of my sources, let's say this person's name was not Negar, but rather Henry. If I go back to preferences and back to automatic export, you can see that it now says pending. That means that a change has been made, but it hasn't been exported or synced with the bib file. So what I can do is I can click on export. And when it says done, it means I'm good to go. When it comes to syncing with better bib tech, you have a few options. Your first option is you can have it do it uh, automatically every time you make a change. So any little detail, it will then re-export the file. The next option is when idle. So if there are changes pending and you're not using Zotero, Better Bib LaTeX will take advantage of that downtime to export the file. And then the final option is disabled, which means that Better Bib LaTeX won't do anything until you manually select the library and then click on export. For me, or for my writing style, or for my library, it's better to have it on disabled, and that way I can do it manually. The reason is that I have a very big library. And so doing an export can take, you know, anywhere between two, three, five, maybe even 10 seconds. And if I have to pause for a 10 second export, every time I make a change to a detail in the library, it's kind of a pain. So I keep everything manual. So that's how you do syncing. Let's just do one quick test to make sure everything is working, huh? I'm gonna go to citation keys and just double check and make sure your quick copy format is pandoc. And then click on site up at the top, excuse me, click on export at the top, and then have your default output format set as better bib tech quick copy. Then let me open up a text file and let's put a few citations in. So I'll go to my library, I'll select the thing I wanna cite, and then I will select command shift C. And then I'll do Command V. 
and you can see it's pasted in the site key. Let's add some text to make it look nice or make it look like a proper piece of writing. I'll add a heading for references. And then from there, let's preview it in Marked to see if it works. And there we go. You can see it's created the parenthetical citation and then generated the reference. And that's how you can use BetterBib LaTeX to create and maintain a bib file for your writing in Markdown and LaTeX. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos and feel free to leave your comments and questions below. If you have ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear them. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at, at DrNerdis and check out the other videos here. There's a lot on plain text and Zotero and all sorts of other topics related to academic writing.